In the world of cyberpunk, where society is always on the verge of collapse, the rich get richer, and when local communities are abandoned without any real social support, gangs sprout up in the vacuum. There are 50 plus gangs mentioned in various cyberpunk books. Some are major players, while others exist just as a punchline, like the gang that roleplays Star Trek characters, for example. Exploring all of them would take forever, so we'll save the older and weirder stuff for a future video. But let's take a look at the 10 key gangs that will be in the upcoming video game. Let's start with one of the first gangs we got to see back during Cyberpunk 2077's gameplay reveal, the Maelstrom Gang. They are one of Night City's older gangs, having been around since 2020. It actually formed from the ashes of the Metal Warriors, which was wiped out by a gang called the Inquisitors. Naturally, the Maelstrom's main goal was to build themselves up and destroy the Inquisitors, which they did by drafting members of other gangs that held personal beef against the Inquisitors. The trademark look of an old-school Maelstrom member was black leather and chrome, and a good third of them were cyberpsychos, which is somebody whose mental state is affected by the use of too many cybernetic augmentations. Despite being dangerous, they mostly kept to smaller crimes, like simple robberies. But by 2077, Maelstrom has evolved into one of the most dangerous groups in Night City. Their need to improve themselves with cybertech has become a core part of their personalities, developing into an obsession, with nearly all members suffering from cyberpsychosis. The gang is over 1,000 members strong, having set up shop in the industrial part of the Watson District. It mainly deals with the smuggling of illegal drugs, as well as the occasional hit on corporate transports. Where the Maelstrom members worship the tech they use to enhance themselves, the animals are the polar opposite. They are interested in the raw power of the flesh, and embracing the primal savage nature of man and beast. Instead of electronic tech, members boost themselves with genetic supplements, vat-grown muscle implants, and something called ultra-testosterone. Animals consider themselves the next dominant step in the evolution of humanity. Often they will pit themselves against worthy foes in brutal tests of combat, whether it be traditional sporting competitions or more illegal altercations against other gangs or the police. They also model themselves after supposed animal behavior, with the gang made up of individual packs run by the strongest member, known as the Alpha. As such, the animals lack any real home turf, and its 3,000 members are spread throughout Night City. Shortly after the Fourth Corporate War, many of its veterans return home to Night City only to be met with crime-ridden neighborhoods and an ineffective police force. So a bunch of them got together to form Sixth Street, a civilian militia that went out into the streets to bring about the justice that they felt was missing and provide protection and training to local neighborhoods and businesses. Members of the 6th Street want you to know that they're just some good old American boys, rocking military uniforms, baseball caps, and a lot of American flags. Oof, that hits different in 2020. The 6th Street of 2077 is still primarily made up of veterans who think of themselves as bringers of justice, but that justice has been warped into a self-serving abuse of power. Now its members demand money for protection, smuggle guns, and run chop shops. They still patrol their local turf and primarily pick fights with other gangs, and because of this, the police and corporations tend to leave them alone. Night City's largest organized gang is the Valentinos. The majority of the members are of Mexican heritage, however they do accept other races and ethnic groups. As such, the Valentinos bond over a shared sense of culture and traditions, and celebrate many Mexican holidays. The communities of Haywood they protect are fiercely loyal to the Valentinos, making the gang nearly untouchable by the police. The Valentinos have been around since 2020, however, in such a vastly different form, it's hard to say if it even shares a connection outside of the name in 2077. In the old days, the Valentinos were a non-threatening poser gang of men that engaged in the art of seduction, attempting to pick up attractive women off the streets. Members would then meet up once every three months to compare scorecards. Basically, the Valentinos were like if a group of pickup artists all decided to start a cyberpunk street gang. So today, I'm here at Venice Beach, and it's Mommy Makeout Day. I'm gonna find some moms and play a really quick game for a really, really, really quick kiss. Another gang that's been around since 2020 is the Tiger Claws. Originally a small group, the now 5,000 member organization is a fearsome gang that models itself after the Japanese Yakuza. 
It likes to put on a face of being a business with an emphasis on honor and principles. It's even said to have close ties to the upper management of the Arasaka Corporation. But this attitude really only sticks with those in high-ranking positions, as many of the Tiger Claw's low-ranking members are violent sadists who abuse their power. The Tiger Claws make their home in Night City's Japantown and largely make money from human trafficking and prostitution. You can spot a member of Tiger Claws by their neon tattoos. The Tiger Claws are inadvertently responsible for the creation of one of Night City's most recent gangs, the Mox. Elizabeth Lizzie Borden was a well-known strip club owner who had a reputation for treating her workers with respect, good pay, and protection. So in 2067, when one of Lizzie's girls was assaulted and murdered by members of the Tiger Claws, Lizzie took matters into her own hands, killing the men and hanging their bodies outside her club as a warning that she was not to be trifled with. This did little to dissuade the Tiger Claws, however, who retaliated in kind by destroying Lizzie's club and killing her. This caused massive protests and riots throughout Night City, and turned Elizabeth Borden into a martyr in the movement against gang violence. Looking to keep the spirit of Elizabeth intact, her followers rebuilt her club, naming it Lizzie's Bar, and made it the headquarters of The Mox, a gang created to protect sex workers and sexual minorities. The term sexual minorities isn't defined specifically, but it's probably fair to assume that this encompasses LGBTQ+, among other groups. They are the least hostile of the major gangs in Night City and primarily stick to their business, so long as you don't mess with them. Another small gang that likes to keep to itself is the Voodoo Boys. Like the Valentinos, there appears to be two very different incarnations of the group. The original Voodoo Boys of 2020 were a nihilist terrorist group that would rape, torture, and kill its victims, seemingly for no reason. Members would use bones as nose piercing, implant feathers on their scalps, and leave chicken blood on doors, all part of some ritual magic theme. Here's the thing, all of that was just an act, as the majority of the members of the Voodoo Boys were all white boys, dressing up in nonsensical racist cosplay and then committing violent hate crimes for fun. Not cool. Despite bearing the same name, the Voodoo Boys of 2077 share no resemblance to the original gang. It is made up entirely of Haitian immigrants living in Night City who banded together. After climate change completely destroyed Haiti in 2062, the Voodoo Boys made its main focus the protection and support of Haitian refugees. It is an incredibly small and secretive group and you won't find them on the streets. Instead, most Voodoo Boys are netrunners, and they spend their time hacking corporate databases or acting as mercenaries for hire. The last of the in-city gangs is the Scavengers, although it's actually hard to say how much of it even counts as an organized group. Scavs prey on anyone with nice cyberware and body augmentations, harvesting them for parts to sell on the black market. Scavs have no code or banner to rally behind, and zero regard for the people they kill. It's unclear how many scavs there actually are. Scavs have no turf, operating in small groups throughout the city with very little structure. All you should know is that if you see a scav tag marked on a street corner, you should stay very far away. And finally, we have the two major nomad groups that have set up shop outside of Night City in the Badlands. Nomads are roaming caravans of refugees that have banded together and travel from city to city. They make up their own societies of families and clans and have a tight-knit bond. The first group is the Aldecaldos, one of the original nomad families to form back in the 1990s. It was started by Juan Aldecaldo and his family when they escaped a war-torn Los Angeles and made their way to Mexico City. There's a fair amount of history to the Aldecaldos that we'll maybe touch on in a separate video, including their relationship to Johnny Silverhand. The second nomad group is the Race. It is your quintessential Mad Max-inspired group of outlaws. Members aggressively raid small towns, weaker nomad groups, and anyone else who happens to be in their path. It has a long rivalry with the Aldecaldos, and expands numbers by taking in exiles from other nomad clans. And that was a look at the 10 groups you'll be facing, or perhaps allying with, in Cyberpunk 2077. As I mentioned, there are a ton of smaller, stranger gangs in the history of Cyberpunk, so look forward to that in an upcoming video. However, our next video will be about the many districts of Night City that these gangs inhabit. If you enjoyed this video and want to get more involved, make sure to check out our community tab where we run polls asking what lore you'd like us to cover, such as last week when you all picked this very topic. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.